Hi Ever House, I am Giovanna and this is my house in Valletta. The first time I saw this house, I told the agent exactly like this, but one meter wider. It's like a pencil, very, very tall, very narrow and very deep. I was fortunate enough to work with the architect Simon Greg, who managed to get a lot of light in the house and also designed the house around me and the things I love. The top floor of the house, its ceiling had caved in. In fact, the house was full of pigeons with pigeon excrement all over the walls. The fact that that space had no ceiling gave us the opportunity to intervene with this emulation of traditional ceilings, but replacing the wooden beams with concrete and the stone slabs with glass slabs. And they function beautifully because there is always light, but never direct sunlight. The dimensions of the glass came from the dimensions of the threads of the stairs. The staircase, which is hanging from the ceiling, is in steel. Everything is a game. It was like, oh, and it can also do that, and we can also use this for that. For example, the glass on the very top is like a dance floor, and you can observe what's going on underneath. The renovation happened quite organically and created with a lot of playfulness. For instance, with the dining table, where I wanted to be able to seat 50 to 20 people, but not have it stand in the center of the room to entertain standing up. The house originally had four floors, including a basement, but the neighboring houses were one floor higher, so there was an opportunity to build an extension on top. Eventually, I had the opportunity to purchase the house behind me. So we did an extension backwards. And the main reason for this was to extend the terrace. We had a small terrace and the idea of having an extra 40, 50 square meters of terrace was a dream. Once you have the opportunity to see the sea, it's very hard to get away from it. It has a magnetic quality. It's designed to function so that we can have our normal living spaces there. So there's spaces to lounge and relax. I didn't want an awning or shade of any sort. So outside is there to appreciate the sky, the full extent of it. The terrace, I believe, is about 70 meters from sea level. So it's almost like you're on the 21st floor or something of a high rise. The dining table on the terrace was originally a Glass Italia table, but unfortunately, because of our heat, the legs fell apart and broke. We repurposed the tabletop by getting beautiful green marble legs designed, and the result is wonderful. Yeah. Architects come up with such fantastic solutions doesn't have to change the cost so much every time. Our bedroom was on the first floor. I loved it. Mellow light, a lot of space, a lot of depth. When we made the extension, I gave my beautiful old bedroom to my daughter and we decided to move upstairs because I wanted to experience the best part of the house constantly. The extension was designed in collaboration with another architect, Jens Brunslow. Somehow we managed to make the division openable, to be able to appreciate the full length of the space, to get light from four aspects, which is very rare. Our soul is always happy when we are in a beautifully lit space. The bedroom designed by Tom van Malderen it's a very, very large headboard which wraps around the bed, takes away from the coldness of materials such as concrete and marble. Another object I love is a hundred-year-old French bath I once found online. It was ridiculously cheap to buy and get delivered to the country, but cost three times as much to deliver it into the room and move it around while the works were happening. I am obsessed with art. I cannot help myself. I focus on living artists. 
artists need to be supported so that they continue producing, so that they can continue enriching the fabric of society. They all communicate something. There is no common thread really between them, except that they captured my attention and my imagination. I wanted to live with them. We didn't have any extra functions to assign to the ground floor. I took the opportunity to put some of the most maybe powerful artworks. If there was a reason why they're there, it's because of that. It's the only floor where there's nothing to do except either walk through it or sit down and stare. Art is what makes me proud to be human. The fact that we can produce art and communicate this way for me trumps everything else which humans can do. When I was thinking of what I wanted my kitchen to be, I decided to have it pretty much all open with hardly any closable storage. Things we use every day, one can make a choice for them to be beautiful. And they are a mixture of some design items, but mostly actually flea market treasures, which is one of my biggest passions. It is small enough so that you can function like an octopus and grab things, see where they are. It is facing the living area and elevated. So uh, my partner, in fact, is usually the main cook and we call him the dish jockey. It's almost like a DJ stand in front of the audience. Not only is there an island where you can interact, but also enjoy and be proud of what you're making. I fell in love with Valletta in my late teens. The city is what kept me in Malta. At first I thought I needed to run away to be anonymous, but the moment I was anonymous, meaning that I would go out in the street and I would know no one, I realized how much I love the fact I can go out in the street and know everyone. Valletta is a beautiful fortress. I am fortunate enough that the house allows me to see about a quarter of the city, which is sparkling and beautiful and has art spaces, galleries, theatres, big festivals with a lot of social engagement like carnival with floats and music and religious feasts and I would not live anywhere else on the island, that's for sure. What's more exciting than thinking about how you want to live is designing where you want your children to grow up living. My son's room was originally the Sala Nobile, which was wider. There is a high-level bed, a mezzanine, so that the bottom is entirely a play area or a living area now that he is growing up. There is a very large hand-drawn map. It's around 100 years old. At some point it was in the roads department during the British colonial times. This is my idea of a home, that it is a space which is a machine for my life, where I feel good in every square meter, be myself with others and hopefully inspired by the experience which a space like this can help provide. Subscribe to the Everhouse channel by clicking on the logo to receive updates on our latest episodes. If you have a project we could feature, get in touch with us at everhouse.co.